show y'all something. Um, <laughs> Lord, I've had a good evening. I felt like who done it today, but um, I just went to see Mama, so that always cheers me up. And uh, Chris is almost home. Him and May have been in Macon all day. And he's stopping by Zaxby's and getting our dinner. So I thought that I would come on and do Bible study real quick before he gets back. And he'll probably walk in the door before we're done. But he's bringing me a chicken finger sandwich meal. Yummy. I used to heat it up in the air fryer. And that way it's like it's just been made. That This air fryer is amazing, y'all. Let me tell you something that's so good in it. Cinnamon toast. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, I don't even know what today is, y'all. I really don't. I think it's the 6th. So we're going to read the 6th Bible study. <laughs> April the 6th, I've been to Mama's and there was a man outside of Tractor Supply making kettle corn. Ha, oh, my weakness. Guess what? I bought some. Four dollars. Thank you. I love it. It smells so good. It was smelling up the car. I got Mama. I got a bunch of stuff at Walgreens for Mama. And went in and she gets so mad at me if I clean her, you know. But she was not in the best of moods today. But I still had a good time. So let's do our Bible study before Chris gets home. How about it? And um, I so want to do a live video, and I just have not had a chance. Believe it or not, it's been crazy this week. So tomorrow, I'm going to clean out my refrigerator. I'll probably do it live. It'll be boring for part of it. But then I'm going to take all of the things I find and probably make a stir fry tomorrow. Because I, th I think I got some good stuff in there that I can make a good stir fry with. April the 6th, who he is, who he is, John chapter 14, verse 9. He who has seen me has seen the Father. This is Charles Stanley's Bible study, daily reading, and it's really good. And he says, when you think about God, what are the first emotions you feel? Are they love, peace, and hope, or fear? uncertainty, and disappointment. For me, when I think of God, the first emotions I feel, and I'm reading this for the first time just like y'all are. The first thing I think of when I think of God is my Father, my Heavenly Father, which is so much more than an earthly Father. So um, that's the first thing I think of when I think of God. The next thing I think of when I think of God is that He's just... I do fear him, but it's a good thing, just like you'd fear your daddy if you did something wrong kind of thing. So he keeps me in line, which is a good thing if you follow his commandments. But um, I know he loves me, and he's my redeemed, you know, he sent his son to die for me, and I'm grateful to him. So it says, this is important because how you see the Lord will shape how you feel about him, how you interact with him. And how you live your life. Of course, the best way to form an accurate view of the Father is to read about Jesus in the Gospels. After all, Christ is the exact representation of his nature. That comes out of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. When you read about Jesus, you are seeing the very character of God at work. Um, and let me just say this. Jesus did come here on this earth. And he was an exact replica of his father as far as his compassion and his love. But he was in an earthly body. He was God in an earthly body. God is not like we are. He is not in, you know, he doesn't, he, he's a lot, he's supernatural. You know, the best Superman there ever was. The best everything there ever was. And um, so don't think of God as a man because he's not a man. And Christ was only a man while he was here on the earth just so that he could show us um, an example of who he is, how much he loves us. Uh, he didn't sin. He um, was patient. He was kind, but he was just and um, full of love. 
Anyway, um, just thought I'd throw that in there. After all, Christ is the exact representation of his nature. When you read about Jesus, you are seeing the very character of God at work. And remember, that does say character. Witness Jesus as he healed those who were sick or as he held the children and blessed them. Think about how he had the time for time for and compassion on all who came to him. And that is a big deal. Yes, he did. And not only that, but he knew things about people before he even got to them. And he knew he was going to go and help them because he's he was God, too. Um, it says he sacrificed himself so that you could know the Father intimately, love with his motivation. That's the most that's the most miracle of all of it is that he did all of that just so that we could have the special relationship with the Father so that the veil would be broken so that we could have a personal relationship through him with the Father again because Adam had lost that in the garden. And it is amazing that he loves us that much. Um, it says, when you get a clear picture of Jesus, you'll realize there's really no reason to be uncertain, fearful, disappointed, or angry at God. On the contrary, there's no one as loving, faithful, kind, or merciful as he is. Rather, you'll find ample reason to respect him and give him your full devotion. Let me close this. It's bright. I think that's what's shining. Um, so it says that we should have an ample reason to respect him and give him your full devotion, and that's true. Now, um, Jesus, and, and you're wanting to know, you know, have you ever been mad at God? Of course, when I was younger. Um, I remember when I was really, really young, and I thought that I, I got myself in the wrong kind of situation, <laughs> and I blamed God, uh, not for all of it, of course, but I was immature and young, and, and there was a time when never that I didn't believe in him or anything like that, but there was a time when I had a hard time with what my life had become, and I felt, you know, kind of like I was blaming God, but like I said, I was immature. I didn't really um, understand that it was my choices that got me put in the situation I was in. I did not go to him and read his word, and I, I prayed every day, but I didn't read his word, and so I was not in his will, and so it really wasn't his fault that I was in the, in the position that I was in. I think they're here. Uh, so I thought I'd get to say a goodbye prayer, but it says, Jesus revealed the Father to me so I can love him more and serve him better. Amen. Um, and it says, my hope is in Jesus because he is my loving Savior. So I think it's fine to be disappointed um, every once in a while because there's people in the Bible that do get that way. Um, as long as you... Uh, Get yourself out of it. Shake yourself up, you know, a little bit and think about who God is and who you are. He's got a lot more to do besides uh, do everything at our beck and call. You know, he's got the whole world in his hands. Think about how stressful you get. Of course, God's not stressed, but I'm just saying, just think about how stressful you get with the little bit of things that you've got to do. And think about all the things that God is in control of. So, um... It's not all about us. It's about him. And that's the number one thing we need to remember. If we could just get that, that it's not about us, it's about him, we can learn to be more content. And um, I think our lives would be better. Thank God for Jesus who makes our lives more abundant here. Um, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. It was a blessing to meet this guy who's popping the popcorn. His wife was disabled. He told me a little bit about their story. Um, you know, it made me feel, even if I have a hard time and I am considered disabled too, um, I keep going, you know, and I told him, I said, tell her to watch. Um, but I just feel sorry for those out there who are, who have a hard time today. I was hurting really bad and I, um, had to lay down for a while. I guess it was the weather or whatever. But that's just part of having fibromyalgia and these autoimmune type diseases. 
you just never know what you're going to feel like. You're hoping you're going to have a good day, but you don't never know if you're going to or not. So this evening, I am feeling better. I got some rest, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God has me here. I'm thankful that he's, that he saved me from cancer and that he has a reason for me to be here. And I hope that he is happy with uh, me. And that's one thing that we should realize, you know, do we do anything for him? Um, is our life important enough for him to keep us here? Are we going to make an impact on somebody else's life? And not just by hugging and kissing and loving them, but are we going to tell them about Jesus? Are we going to tell them who saved us? Are we going to tell them about the gospel? The best thing that we could ever tell them. The most important thing that we could ever tell them. Um, and I think that matters to him the most. So, um, y'all, tell somebody about the Lord. Brag on him. Do something uh, this weekend. And let's say our prayers before Chris drives up. My dogs start going crazy. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for all that you have done for us. We thank you for this beautiful world that you've put us in. I know a lot of people like to focus on the negative, but I think this world is beautiful. I think you've made it beautiful. I think there's so many things out here that we can love and be encouraged by if we just take the time out to think about them. Especially the fact that you have sacrificed your son um, so that we could have an eternal life in heaven, a gorgeous place that you've also um, gone to make a place for us. Um, I can't imagine why we complain so much like we do. And we're, you know, when we're uh, gloomy and in a bad mood, we need to focus on all the things in this world that you have provided for us to enjoy. Whether it's a piece of fruit, a beautiful flower, the clouds in the sky. Our salvation, of course, the love that we have in us through you is amazing. We can love people with agape love, which not everybody can do. There's so many things that Holy Spirit's here to guide us, that we have benefits and blessings that you've given us, and we should be thankful. Um, be with each of us who watch this uh, study, help us to learn more about you. Help us to want to read your word. Um, sometimes it's hard and we get busy, but just help us, Lord, to take time out to think on you and pray for those around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good, good night. I'm going to taste my popcorn because it's staring at me. Y'all, I've been buying that Boom Chica Pop Pop because I really like it. If you get it, Sam's, it's not too expensive. And then I bought some, they sell it with the chicken pop in the microwave. And I ate that when I was at the beach. So when this guy was popping cattle corn on the side of the road in front of Tractor Supply, you know I had to get some. He's from California. And they were having to remodel his kitchen because uh, something happened and... and and ruined his kitchen, so they're getting the money, and they're going to remodel the kitchen, and he's excited, and he says he loves to cook, and that he'd even thinking about be, uh, he had even thought about doing a cooking show for men that don't know how to cook, and I said, well, you need to. He was very pleasant. He had a nice smile. He was in a good mood. He had a good personality, and um, I hope he tries it, you know, and we don't ever need to give up. We always need to try our best to do and keep going. And um, I haven't been as active lately, but we've been so busy. So I'll just be glad when things slow down. But with one daughter about to graduate, two going to prom, they're both going on a senior trip together. They're actually taking the trip together. Um, my husband buying a boat. My mother's fell and has been really sick this week. I mean, it's just the list goes on and on and on. Plus, uh, me and Chris have had a few projects to do with our architectural um, little company that we have. And so it has just been wild, to say the least, wild. Um, Kamisha says, it is good, and I always get it at fairs too. Yes, it is good. Hey, Angie with Garden Obsessions. Hey, Angie, I've got tulips outside blooming. And normally, the purple blooms first, they die off, and then the other colors come in later. 
and they're all bloomed at the same time. They're so pretty. I need to take a picture and send to you. And another thing that's really pretty out in the yard, Angie, is Cotton Easter. I don't know if you have it, but I think I'm going to take a picture and show you that too. Just see if you got some. Y'all have a blessed night. I'm going to have a wonderful night. Chris is going to be tired. He's been gone. He was out of town Monday, out of town Tuesday, out of town yesterday, out of town yes today. I mean, like all day long on the road trips, four days this week. So I'm sure he's going to be tired. What drives me crazy is the man can be gone all day like that. I don't know how he does it. Come home and then go work out or go walk for two hours. And I'm like, golly, if I, I just don't know how I, I mean, I'm just blessed to have a husband that's in good shape. That's for sure. She said, is it like, I don't even know how to say, know how to say that, Allison? I'm not sure, Angie, but I'm going to take a picture of it and uh, let you see it. I'll put it on here. I'll just take a couple of pictures of my flowers. I'll walk you outside right now and post them and and you can tell me if you have some. I'm going to go because they should be driving up any second. I'm going to go take the pictures right quick so I can eat my chicken. Bye. I love y'all. Love y'all bunches.